The NRA's playbook is absolutely fucking outrageous. Offense, offense, offense. Guns save lives. Gun control does not. The only thing that stops a bad guy with a gun is a good guy with a gun. Crying white mothers are ratings gold. You condemn the victims. You manipulate the media to make it not look as bad as it really is. Our task was to infiltrate the NRA and get their inner workings and playbook. The right to protect and defend yourself, it's recognized by the Constitution, but it's a God-given right. I just honestly just could not ever have imagined that we could peer into with such clarity into this, into this monstrous world. What we found was, was absolutely gobsmacking. I'm Peter Charlie, an investigative journalist with Al Jazeera. I was driving out to the airport here in Washington, D.C., past the headquarters of the National Rifle Association, the NRA. It just so happened that I heard on my car radio a report of yet another school shooting. And I looked across and thought, what on earth are they thinking in there? I picked up the phone and called my boss and say, I've got this audacious idea. I want to create a fake grassroots pro-gun organisation based in Australia uh, with the intention of trying to fool the NRA, if you like, into, into thinking that we're on their side. I needed to hire a front man who was going to be the key undercover guy. I decided to call my friend Roger Muller, a fellow I've known for more than 20 years. I'm Roger Muller. I was an undercover reporter for Al Jazeera investigating the NRA. Peter rang me. He then talked to me a little bit about his idea of uh, forming an Australian gun lobby, a fake Australian gun lobby, and uh, infiltrating the NRA, and asked if I would be interested in um, being the, the, the person in charge of that lobby. I said yes. We constructed a fake organisation that purported to represent the interests of a portion of the Australian population that was unhappy with Australia's tough gun control laws. There was a massacre in the southern state of Tasmania in Australia in the mid-1990s. On the island of Tasmania, the worst massacre in Australian history. The massacre at a major tourist attraction has shocked the nation. And the government, the Conservative government at the time, made radical changes to Australia's gun laws. It's a real bugbear for the NRA that Australia is such a safe place. Hey guys, Roger Muller here from Gun Rights Australia. We don't have our rights as gun owners diluted. And they've, they've come out with legislation that picks on farmers. Gun crime has been decreasing at a steady rate. That was his cover story. He hated the gun laws in Australia. He thought they were too, too strict, too tight. It was really difficult because, you know, you, you're pretending to be something that really grates against your DNA. And you're walking down a street of a small town where you know most people are thinking you're a gun nut. I flew him to London to have him trained in the use of these tiny little cameras that we hide in buttons, in shirts and various other places. He ended up putting one in his Akubra hat, the Aussie hat. Once we'd, we'd established the website and, um, and had the social media going, we then reached out to the NRA and uh, said that, we, that I would be in America on business and it'd be nice to have a meeting. And... Oh my God! Oh my God! 17 people have been killed, students and adults. The sight of what's become an all too familiar panic of students fleeing hands raised in single file, only matched by the images of armed tactical police. During our investigation, there was the dreadful massacre at the high school in Florida. And we used it as a way for them to explain uh, or to give us clues and hints as to how we should deal with something similar if, if it were to occur in Australia. What their playbook actually is, is to actually not talk to an event. We will not comment because we don't want our name in that story. We have nothing to do with it. So we generally just won't comment. The NRA advised that if the media persists, then you go on the offensive. Offense, offense, offense. And that is an effective communication strategy. Um, and that's what the NRA does very well. One of the key tools that the NRA uses is to create the idea that we are all under threat. House invasion, rape, assault, you name it. At the top of the tweet or the Facebook post or whatever, not allowed to defend their home, not allowed to defend their home, mm -hmm. boom. 
women, that's the key, women. You've got, to, you've got to tell women they're vulnerable. The only way they can protect themselves is to carry guns. It's an absolute fucking... <laughs> the volunteers tell Roger how the NRA sways public opinion. See, the angle is, yeah. shouldn't she be allowed to, to protect herself? Defend herself. Why are you trying to take this away from her? If I can somehow put it into that context, I can win the argument. Man, what, what kind of barbarian are you? The NRA's playbook is absolutely fucking outrageous. The things that they could do in the event of a school shooting was just bloody disgusting, frankly. You smash down those who are grieving, those who want gun reform. You dominate them. You lie to them. How dare you stand on the graves of those children to put forth your political agenda? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. shame them to the whole idea. I love that. It's like you. The One Nation political party is a right wing Australian party. It's run by a woman named Pauline Hanson. I'm not there to keep the bastards honest, I'm there to get rid of the bastards. <laughs> Women and children who are fleeing Iraq. Would you turn them around and send them back to Saddam Hussein? Yes. Don't mess with me. Just make my day. The investigation had been going for uh, about two, two and a half years, and Peter saw an article that was talking about a connection between One Nation and the NRA. So Peter asked me to contact One Nation, which I did. Roger's first meeting with Pauline Hanson's chief of staff, James Ashby, Roger mentioned that he had good friends in the NRA. James Ashby said, oh, I'd like to meet them, and asked for Roger to set up a meeting with them. If the NRA want to rally their um, supporters with Australia, that's one start. Two, I'd love to get my hands on their software. Three, if they can help us with, if they can help us with donations. So, after I met with James Ashby, I had a phone call from Steve Dixon, who was head of the One Nation party in Queensland. Where the aha moment was, was when One Nation got involved and how eager they were to extract information, systems and money from the American gun lobby. We would win potentially balance of power if we took two seats in the lower house. I reckon you can do that with two million dollars. If you went 20, you would own the lower house and upper house. You would have the balance of power in both houses. So if they could receive funds from the gun lobby uh, that would then fund uh, the political campaigns here in Australia, that would then put pressure on the Australian gun laws to make them more like American gun laws. And that would be the payback to the gun lobby. Why don't you knock up some policy for us for guns that we can run with with One Nation? Okay, what do you think of that? Yeah. You don't get millions and millions without there being some sort of expectation that you will pay them back legislatively or in some fashion or other. We also had a number of meetings with senior NRA different departments uh, in, and, and some other uh, gun lobby groups and uh, Koch brothers. The Koch brothers are two of the biggest and most controversial names in American industry and politics. They're worth $43 billion each. One Nation announces it has a meeting lined up that week with representatives of the energy giant Coke Industries. What you can do to help us, and it, it's going to get down to money at the end of the day, as James started to touch on. We can change the voting system in our country, the way people operate. We've got the money to do it. We have the people. We've got the momentum. It's impossible to know whether any money changed hands. Very shortly after that, Pauline Hanson voted to ban donations from foreign parties. I think that overseas money should not have an influence in our political scene as well. So I believe foreign donations should be stopped, totally. That's something that's always confused me. It's Pauline Hanson 100% knew why James Ashby and Steve Dixon were going to America, but then stood up and said that she didn't think we should have any foreign donations. There's no big organisations that donate to One Nation, I can assure you that. It's just unfathomable that in a public space that there can be that much secrecy about where the money's coming from. One Nation's James Ashby knows how Australia would react if it ever learned that the party was asking for American gun money. If it gets out, it'll f***ing rock the boat.
So his meetings in Washington were to be kept secret, or so he thought. The documentary caused uh, an, an absolute shitstorm of outpouring of gratitude uh, in Australia, some criticism for the methods used. This guy was employed by a Middle Eastern country, by Al Jazeera, as an Australian spy to interfere in Australian politics. This is a political attack by Al Jazeera in cooperation with the ABC. The NRA had an absolute zero reaction, which um, was predictable. What was nice was a number of people who uh, came up and shook my hand in the street afterwards saying, look, honestly thought you'd gone mad and uh, gave you a wide berth, but mate, you did an incredible thing. You've done great things for Australia and, um, you know, we're proud of you, I suppose, was the, the main message.